Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about how automatic transmissions became cool again. And I say again because I assume at some point they were considered cool because of how popular they have become just over the years. I mean, so many vehicles, no more manual transmission, we're moving on to automatic. And now we have other options like dual clutch and we also have CVTs as well as the manual transmission. Uh, but what seems to be the case is that uh, the automatic transmission isn't going anywhere. So if we go back to the 2002 BMW 7 Series, this was the first production core to have a six-speed automatic. And by automatic, in this video, I'm talking about a planetary gear set and using a torque converter, the slush box, uh, which isn't that thrilling of a name. And so, you know, why would, why would a slush box ever be cool? But today, today I, I do believe they are. So back in 2001, when the 2002 7 Series was introduced, that was the first six-speed automatic transmission. And that's kind of crazy because, you know, that's not all that long ago and six speeds today are kind of irrelevant. We've got eight speeds, nine speeds, ten speeds, uh, I don't know, infinite speeds with the CVT. So we have so many speeds now in different transmissions, uh, but we also have dual clutch transmission. So in 2003, Volkswagen was like, uh, we don't need to do this uh, automatic planetary torque converter nonsense. Dual clutch is the way to go. So they introduced the D SG in Europe with the Volkswagen Golf R32. So this was the first production car to have it, and it didn't have a torque converter. And so, you know, you had quicker shifts, you didn't have the efficiency losses associated with a torque converter, and you had very direct driving feel because you don't have that torque converter. And so, you know, perhaps DCT at the time seemed like the future, and still in many scenarios, uh, you know, it's still relevant. Uh, it does have quick shifts for sports cars, but, you know, for everyday vehicles and even for sporty cars, uh, the automatic transmission has remained relevant. Event. How in the world has it done that? You know, 15 years later, after that DCT was introduced, uh, we still have very cool automatic transmissions, and the DCT did not replace everything. Well, I am sitting inside of the BMW X7, and this has an 8-speed automatic transmission. It's the ZF 8HP, uh, a newer variant of it. So there's various variants of the 8HP, uh, and this is one of the newer ones in this brand new BMW X7. And the 8HP P by ZF or ZF if you want to say ZF. I'm going to say ZF because it sounds a little fancier even though I still say Corvette Z06 and Z for every other reference that uses the letter Z. Anyways, it's ZF. Uh, that's how you say it. And so it's the ZF 8HP. Now, this transmission has changed, in my opinion, the automatic, uh, you know, revolution. So, so the automatic is cool again purely because of this 8-speed ZF transmission. And you might think, okay, this BMW has a 4.4 liter twin, twin scroll, turbocharged engine, 456 horsepower, tons of torque. Why wouldn't you pair that with something super sporty like a dual clutch transmission? And yet you don't need it. This eight speed automatic with a planetary gear set and a, and a torque converter, uh, you know, in my opinion, it, it does just as well as a dual clutch performance wise. But BMW isn't the only company using this transmission. So I've pulled over to read you a very quick list of cars which are using the ZF 8 speed, and it might not at first seem like these cars should be using a regular old planetary automatic. Aston Martin Vanquish, Alfa Romeo Giulia, Jaguar F Type, BMW, pretty much every BMW, pretty much every Rolls Royce, Jeep Trackhawk, Dodge Hellcat, Bentley Continental GT, Lamborghini Urus, Toyota Supra, Land Rover, Maserati, the Supra's a Z4, Ram trucks even use this. According to Car and Driver, in 2017, they built 3.5 million 8HP transmissions uh, for various manufacturers. So everybody is using these things. Well, why is everyone using it? Well, in 2015, I got the opportunity to find out. It was my first time driving a vehicle with this transmission that I was aware of, at least, and it was in the Jaguar F-Type R. And when I drove the car, I didn't know what transmission it had. I had no clue, but I knew that I loved the transmission because it was very smooth and it was very fast. In fact, I thought it was a dual clutch transmission. And then I went home and I Googled it and said, what transmission does this have? And I found out it was the ZF8 speed. And so then I went and did a little text overlay on the video and said, this is the best automatic I've ever driven because I thought it was a dual clutch. I thought it was shifting as quickly as a dual clutch and it felt as direct when you were in gear like a dual clutch. Uh, and so, you know, what, what have they done here? And so from a driving perspective, you know, there's two things that I really care about in a transmission. Is it quick to 
shift and is it smooth? So that includes the response time of when you ask it to shift, as well as how long does it actually take to execute? And then, you know, is it smooth and shifting? And in this vehicle, truthfully, if you have passengers in the car and you're just sitting here selecting through the gears on the, uh, with the paddle shifters here, they're not going to know you're shifting gears. You can barely, barely feel it. So the shift quality is insanely good. The shifting is so smooth and it's extremely fast. So, you know, it does both things from a driving perspective that I think you want in a transmission. But from an engineering standpoint, you know, shift times and shift quality as far as how smooth it is, that's not all that matters. There's many things that matter in a transmission. So cost, of course, is critically important when designing anything. Efficiency, of course, is very important to engineers. Size is very important because it has to fit within vehicles. And then, of course, the weight of it is important. That correlates with efficiency. If it's giant and heavy, uh, even if it does work efficiently as far as the losses through the transmission, no one cares because it's too big and too heavy. So speaking of size and weight, what's really impressive is that if it was able to keep the size of it, the length of it is the exact same as the six speed that it replaces. So it can be packaged in the same vehicle and you can just put in that eight speed transmission rather than the six speed and it takes up no, no more space. And it does that with 2.8 less kilograms. So you get more gears in the same amount of space that weighs less. I mean, that is just incredible from an engineering standpoint. Okay, so what about efficiency? Efficiency is obviously important here. And one of the cool things about this transmission, there's five shifting elements within it in order to select the different gears. So there's three clutches and there's two brakes. And so you use a combination of any three of those, whether that's two brakes and one clutch, just three clutches and no brakes, one brake and two clutches, whatever it may be, that's how you select each gear. And so what that means is that any one given gear, you only have two elements which are open, which are gonna give you those parasitic drag losses. So the less elements you have open, uh, the less drag losses you will have. And so the more efficient that transmission is going to be. They also claim that they have a 98% or better gear set efficiency. So the actual losses through a gear set is less than 2%. Uh, and in fact, for first gear and for sixth gear, it's essentially just a locked up direct drive. So you have zero gear set efficiency losses in first gear and in sixth gear. They've also stated that between 500 RPM and 3000 RPM, so that's that region where if you're trying to drive efficiently, you're probably gonna be within that RPM region. They have dropped the losses, the efficiency losses by 50% versus the six speed transmission. So they've really improved that. So what does this all add up to? Well, they have 6% better fuel economy, 6% fewer emissions, purely from switching uh, a transmission. So if a transmission alone can give you 6% better fuel economy and emissions, I mean, that is pretty wild. That's a huge improvement and certainly worth doing. So same size, less weight, more gears, more efficient. What about shift times? So in many cases, it's actually twice as fast to shift gears versus the six speed that it replaces. I mean, that's incredible improvement, whether that's from, you know, second gear to eighth gear or from seventh gear down to third gear. And so, you know, there's kind of three ways that they, they worked to do this. So there's optimization from the shifting itself. So you have the command when either I touch this paddle and say, hey, I want to downshift. There's the command. And so it has to process that information. And then it has to actually execute this shift. So it sends that hydraulic fluid to the correct brakes and the correct clutches in order to execute the ship. So they've optimized that, you know, minimizing the amount of flow, how that pressure works out, the processing time required to interpret when do I need to shift gears or when you push your foot down on the throttle pedal. And then there's also the fact that you have more gears. So eight gears versus six gears, it means the steps can be smaller. So if you're dropping the engine, let's say you're downshifting and you're dropping the engine from 5,000 down to 4,000 RPM rather than from 5,000 down to 3,000 RPM, obviously it takes less time to drop less RPM. Uh, so just a simple way of having more gears means the shifts are probably going to be quicker. And then finally, you know, using the engine to help out. So in this case, uh, you know, if on a downshift, you're going to blip the throttle a little bit to help get the engine up to speed. On an upshift, what you're going to do is kind of kill the engine so that it drops down, uh, the engine RPM drops down very quickly to whatever speed it needs to be at to match the next gear. But overall, I mean, it is incredible how quick and how smooth this thing is able to change gears. I mean, I'm in comfort mode here. Let's put it in sport so it actually, you know, is a little bit more aggressive with shifts. And even still, you barely feel it and it is so fast to do it. It is unbelievable how quick this thing is able to shift gears. 
All right, but what about all the downsides of a torque converter? Because that's kind of the big player here as far as efficiency losses. If you have that torque converter spinning up and you're just putting heat into a fluid, you're losing you know, power and energy that could otherwise be used to propel you forward. So less wheel horsepower versus a dual clutch, uh, less efficiency versus a dual clutch. But the thing is, modern torque converters and modern transmissions have been designed to maximize the region at which the torque converter is locked up. So once it's locked up, you get that very good, you know, direct feel of when you put your foot down. It doesn't feel like, you know, this kind of slushy, sloppy mechanism. It's very direct in what you ask for and what you get. And so that's really only occurring uh, where you have slip in the torque converter at very low speeds. And so why do they do this? Well, it's actually advantageous. If you've driven a dual clutch transmission below five miles per hour, you've probably felt the vibration, the roughness, the harshness. It kind of is lurchy because it wants to collapse those clutches rather than have them slipping. So if you've ever driven a dual clutch at very low speeds, you notice, you know, it doesn't have that smoothness that you get with a torque converter. So there's an advantage from an acceleration standpoint, uh, from a smoothness standpoint, from a stop using that torque converter and having slip. The other advantage, of course, is having the torque multiplication that torque converters provide. So you have torque multiplication, you're able to get a better launch from a stop. So from a stop, uh, a, a traditional automatic is better than a dual clutch because you're able to have torque multiplication and it's smoother. Once you start going, you want to lock up that torque converter so that you have the direct feel and then use you know, the modern technology that we have now to have very quick shifts occur. So it really is kind of the best of all worlds. Um, and in fact, the Aston Martin CEO was like, it's cheaper, it's lighter, and it's quicker than dual clutch transmission. Why would I put a dual clutch transmission in my cars? And I mean, that is just such a crazy endorsement. And sure, Aston Martins aren't meant to be all out performance. And there's a reason why McLaren is still using dual clutch transmissions. But there's also a very good reason why this eight speed ZF transmission is literally everywhere because it is such a good transmission and it does everything so well. And the shift quality, I mean, it's, it's unparalleled in the automatic world. It really is. It is so good to shift gears, so smooth, and, and there's nothing else, no other automatic that I have driven that's been anywhere close to the quality of shifts that this thing has. Now, personally, of course, I would prefer everything came with a manual transmission. I would always opt for the manual if it was offered, but I cannot fault manufacturers for choosing to use this ZF 8-speed, and it's awesome that it's so prevalent and so common without, within the industry now and that there's so many cars that you can get with it because it truly is an exceptional, exceptional transmission. So thank you all so much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below.